It's still uh, illegal to be homeless and without a shelter bed in the city of New Haven. Mark Colville, talk about your press release and what's going on with the situation with the homeless and uh, the mayor. Well, the situation is that um, the homeless, it's, the, it's still uh, illegal to be homeless and without a shelter bed in the city of New Haven. Um, and that's, that's based on the policies that the city has enacted. Um, number one, there's not enough shelter beds in the city. And number two, when, uh, when people are refused a shelter bed and sent to the street, they're sent there with the mandate to scatter and to disappear. Um, we proved that a few weeks ago when we took over a piece of city land which is right next to the Catholic Worker House um, and we set up uh, a very peaceful and quiet uh, um, tent city where uh, we had five tents set up and we had uh, uh, some of our homeless <clears throat> uh, brothers and sisters living there um, and the city came and evicted us and arrested two of us and took the tents away. Um, the, we did that action because we were trying to claim the human right of taking refuge together uh, for people who have no refuge. Um, the city made plain by their actions and subsequently in a mayor with the meeting, uh, a meeting with the mayor in which uh, we were told that they don't have an answer to our question about where the homeless should go when, um, when they don't have a shelter bed. There is no legal place uh, no place that a person could sleep uh, who is homeless without a shelter bed uh, in which they would not be risking arrest. <clears throat> now, why do the shelters close? They close in May? Yes, um, that's become a seasonal, uh, seasonal reality. When the overflow shelters, which is what they call the, the shelter on Howard Avenue, an overflow shelter. And the reason for that name is that its original mission was to provide a bed for anybody who asked for one in the city of New Haven. Um, in other words, that that was supposed to ensure that everybody uh, who was homeless would have the opportunity to sleep in a bed under a roof. Um, the mission of the overflow shelter uh, in recent years has been changed to uh, just a few extra shelter beds uh, that doesn't cover the need of, uh, of all the homeless in the city and in fact um, the, the real purpose of it is just to ensure that people don't freeze to death because as soon as the weather is warm um, uh, in early spring uh, they, they close that shelter and they don't open it up again until the weather the temperature drops below uh, freezing again. But there's no magical housing that opens up in May. That's correct. And again, when you send people to the street, you're criminalizing their lives. Uh, and that's because of the policies that are in place right now. The other thing to remember is that there is no plan for um, low-income housing development here in the city. Not only that, but the existing low-income housing units throughout this city are at risk, perpetually at risk, because there is no law in, uh, for developers to replace uh, low-income units one for one, which, is, uh, which would be essential to uh, preserving uh, the communities of low-income people in the city, and it would be essential for getting people you know, permanently out of homelessness. We can't be, you know, reducing, uh, shrinking the um, the numbers of low-income housing units, and then say that we're we're we have a real plan to deal with homelessness. I'm glad you got into this question of uh, low-income housing because people generally think homeless means utterly destitute, don't have any money at all. But there's a lot of people who just can't afford New Haven housing. Isn't that right? That's right, and, and homelessness has, has taken on, um, you know, it, homelessness has become uh, much more rampant, obviously, in the cities in this country. And we know that um, for low-income people, even with, with apartments, um, there, most of them are, are just a few paychecks away from being on the street. Um, so the reality of homelessness, uh, it's, it's because, again, be, the, the policies in place ensure the permanence of homelessness um, and destitution. Now you've met with the mayor, there were promises made and you don't feel they're being kept? 
That's right. Um, the, the mayor did make uh, several commitments uh, involving adding more shelter beds to the, uh, to the shelter in, on Grand Avenue. Um, she said that they would, be, they, they would do a complete audit of that shelter, get rid of the bed bugs, which have been a major complaint, um, and to do whatever uh, rehab is necessary to make that place more livable. They also, um, there's a policy in place called 90 days in, 90 days out, which essentially is uh, a person can have a bed there for 90 days, assuming they can get in. Um, but after 90 days, they're, they're obligated to leave and not use the shelter for the next 90 days, um, which, uh, according to our homeless friends, is, is a very burdensome policy, uh, in large part because it, it, it makes getting back on your feet uh, extremely hard, you know. Um, so, we, she promised to do... When was this? When did she make these promises? This was a week after they busted up our tent city. Um, the following Thursday, we met uh, at the mayor's office, and she made these commitments. But what, what date, approximately? That was May uh, 22nd. Um, and so today, I mean, our purpose today was to... Uh, to once again say publicly, uh, where then shall we go? There still is not an answer to that question. And where are the reforms that, uh, that were promised to us? And finally, what is going to be done? Um, what are you warning about that you are going to be doing to take further action? Well, we've, we've uh, pledged to, in a month's time, uh, roughly a month, on uh, actually a little more than a month, July 24th, uh, we are once again going to uh, take a, a piece of uh, city property um, and claim it uh, as refuge uh, for the homeless and for those who have been scattered. Um, again, it's, we, it's the assertion of a human right. And uh, we, we, we want the city to know ahead of time, we want the people of New Haven to know ahead of time that we're going to assert this right again on July 24th. Uh, uh, July coming and um, you know we hope that uh, between now and then perhaps it, it uh, this action will not uh, will be made unnecessary um, that I mean that's my personal hope um, but the emergency is tonight you know uh, it's important for people to realize that there's all kinds of um, of good works being done for the homeless and there's even some some larger initiatives including the hundred days program which is which has an ambitious goal of, of housing uh, all of the chronically homeless people in this city within a hundred days these are all um, whose program is that the hundred days program uh, well it's as I understand it's a it's a uh, coalition of um, uh, Columbus House and other other uh, agencies in the city uh, and a lot of really um, uh, excellent folks who have been working with homeless and low-income people for many years. And we applaud that, uh, that policy, okay, uh, or that initiative. But the problem, again, is policy. It's um, housing the homeless that are currently on the street um, will not solve the, po the problem because it's a problem of policy. The perpetuation of homelessness is what we're trying to deal with here. Thank you very much. Thanks. <clears throat> and, uh, I've been on the streets here for a couple of days. I was uh, evicted out of my apartment and uh, I'm just trying to find a place to stay now and it is extremely hard. And uh, I'm not originally from the city so being in a shelter is you know not really my thing. Um, the Grand Ave shelter is hideous. It's absolutely horrendous. I would never go there even if I had to. And um, there's just no place for people. Like Say hideous. In what way? Dirty conditions are terrible. Uh, from what I hear, there's people going to the bathroom on the floors and stuff. And uh, I just wouldn't stay there, you know. And for people like me or people who are turned away because it's full due to, you know, not enough beds or whatever the situation is, there's no place for us to stay. And uh, that's a big problem. And New Haven needs to take care of that. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know the logistics behind it, but... Um, you know, there needs to be a plan in place for the people who don't have a place to stay. And, uh, you know, that that's a problem because it, it makes us criminals when we're not. You know, we're just people who are in a, in a bad situation in a bad place. If I could ask, how did you become homeless? What kind of work do you do? 
Well, uh, I, I'm a mechanic. I do uh, mechanic, auto body work, stuff like that. And um, th the money's just not there. You know, I, I lost work a couple years ago. I've been out of jobs. I was trying to go back to school and uh, just couldn't pay the rent and got evicted. And uh, it's, it's been hard, you know. So, um, you know, it's just tough trying to get trying to get a place to stay till I can get back on my feet and, you know, find a job or maybe go to school or something, you know. It's just really tough for people like that, you know, because we're not criminals, but they make us out to be these terrible people, and we're, we're just not, you know. Thank you very much. You're very welcome.